the Filipino year is marked by ritual and tradition. In the season of Dayao, we will relish the preparations and celebrations that have defined our many cultures. What do we as Christians, as animists, as Islamic Filipinos value most? And how do we mark our years to show our collective aspirations? Tayo ay magdiwa at magpasalamat as we mark the milestones of the Filipino year. This is Dayao, our knowledge, our pride. All throughout the fifth season of Dayao, we have looked at how different Filipinos celebrate and give thanks, from the folk Catholicism that honors the Nino and Nazareno, to the ways in which Semana Santa is commemorated, to the animist Subanon and their joyful jumping in the Buklog ritual. From the way the Maranao celebrated Ramadan in the city of Marawi, to the different meanings of a harvest for traditional farmers. We end season five with a look at an icon who holds a very special place in the heart of Catholic Filipinos. In her, we see Mother Mediatrix, a source of succor and consolation. In her many guises and titles, she becomes a personal symbol of identity, a reminder of the old hometown, the province, the communities we return to during her fiestas. Here are the ways in which we celebrate Maria. Even before the coming of the Spaniards, meron ng mga hint that Filipinos are already having veneration for the Mother of God, kahit hindi pa nila kilala. That uh, before the coming of the Spaniards, yung ating mga natives, meron ng imahe na gano'n, nagulat nga yung mga Kastila. Sabi na, una ka pa sa amin, kami ang supposed to be na magdadala ng relihiyon ng yung anak. So meron ng gano'n, in our folklore, meron ng mga hints na parang, Pinili na ng langit ang Pilipinas to be a Marian country. At ang kultura ng mga Pilipino, makaina tayo. No? Napaka-strong ng presence ng ating ina sa ating buhay. Kaya naman, even in our spirituality, very strong din ang presence ng isang figure ng isang ina, ang ina ng ating Panginoong Jesus. But of course, it doesn't stop with Mary. She's the one who brings us to her son, Jesus Christ. Among the great icons of the Marian devotion in the Philippines, she is the oldest, her shrine in Ermita is the smallest and simplest. Her origins are shrouded in myth and mystery. One theory posits that the image represents a Southeast Asian Apsara, or angel transformed into a representation of the Immaculate Conception. What is the story of the Nuestra Señora de Guía? This is the image that has been preserved all the past through the years, 447 years ago. She was already here when the, um, before the Spaniards came. So this Spanish galleon coming from, from abroad, from Europe, they would always come here to the Philippines and there was no guide at all, there was no light at all. But uh, upon reaching the shoreline of Pandila de la Bay, to their surprise, there's always a light coming from here. And that was their guideline, going to the shore of Manila Bay. Only to find out when they already landed on, on the shore that the light was coming from the Virgin. So this was a guiding, that's why she's now called Our Lady of Guidance. She was just a lighthouse, lighting the, the Spanish galleon trade. We 
we never touch the virgin or put any insecticide or any preservative on the wood. She's always been intact for 447 years old and she's been never repaired, never restored, and she is now at ease on how she was founded. Nuestra Señora de Guía is a very simple virgin here in Inarbita. She's the oldest Marian image in the Philippines. This is the attributes of Mary. In her own humble way, she's just here uh, waiting for all the devotees to plead to her to ask for intercession, and she gives it, but at no title at all. That is the attributes of Mary, very simple as the Mother of God. The Marian image is worshipped in many forms and guises. In Paki Laguna, she is seen as a sorrowing mother, or the Nuestra Señora de los Dolores. In the vernacular, her title is all the more poetic. Ang Mahal na Ina ng Pitong Hapi, a reference to the seven daggers of sorrow that pierce her heart. But her festival is far from dolorous or sad. In September 1788, uh, an oil painting, the size, the size is 9 by 11 inches, was found on the shore of Laguna de Bay of the Pakil area. It is uh, known that it fell off from the casco or the boat of a missionary. And when they found the image on the shore of Bakil, they could not lift it because it was so heavy. And so the fishermen's wives went to the church to call the parish priest. And when he came with all these uh, assistants and all the church people, he was able to lift it because it, it used to be very heavy. And when he was able to lift it, all the church people, all the people around clapped their hands, sang, danced, jumped with joy. And when the Spanish friars saw the mode of the people, he called it turumba, because turumba is a Spanish word which means uh, nahihibang or nawawala sa sarili, in ecstasy, uh, out of their minds, in, uh, in joy. The turumba festival is marked by dancing and jumping and cheering. rituals ng uh, mga deboto ay ang mga sumusunod. No? Una, bumibili sila ng kandila, nagtitirik sila. No? Ito, ito yun noong pang araw na araw, ha? hanggang ngayon. Pangalawa, bumibili sila ng langis ng birhen, ipinapahid e nila sa kanilang katawan na may mga sakit. No? Ang pangatlo, sumasama sila sa prosesyon. No? Uh, pangapat, uh, naliligo sila doon sa panghulo. And then, uh, panglima, nag-uuwi din sila ng tubig galing doon sa panghulo. And panganim, uh, pumukuha sila ng bulaklak sa andas ng birhen at inuuwi nila sa kanilang mga bahay. So ang paniwala nila, marami silang hinihiling sa mahal na birhen na nangyayari. Like uh, kung gusto nilang umigi sa kanilang sakit, bumabalik sila, nagpapasalamat dahil granted yung request nila.
all of Bicolandia hails the Virgin of Peña Francia as their mother. What is most unusual about the image is that she is a native copy of a European virgin, the Lady of Peña de Francia. But the local image has a unique and intriguing history. Carved by the native artisan, the santo was doused in dog's blood. Was it an offering that recalled animist traditions? Like our usual habit here, the Thai dog, dead dog, they will throw into the river. So that's what they did with the dog. They threw it into the river. And this is witnessed by so many and properly documented that as soon as the dog touched the water, it went in and came out alive, started swimming back to the house of the owner. So that is how it started here in Bicol. The miracle that occurred after the sacrifice was the beginning of the image's fame. Ang pagiging deboto ko ay nakagisdan ko na sa aking mga magulang na mga deboto din ni Ina. Kaya yung mga ninuno namin na ang panata nila naging panata na rin namin at sa mga sumunod pang henerasyon ng aming pamilya. Malalim na talaga ang, ang pagdidibusyon at ang pananalig at pananampalataya sa Divino Rostro at kay Ina. Naging parte na ng aming tradisyon at ng kultura ng Bicolano. In the stories of Marian images, we see how the Catholic traditions of Spain became uniquely and distinctly Filipino. With each story or legend, the foreign icon becomes more and more a reflection of the history of the nation, an object that embodies our aspirations, a bridge to the divine. These days, the journey to Manawag in Pangasinan is shorter and easier. Attracting more and more pilgrims to the shrine of the Nuestra Señora del Rosario. She who is more affectionately known as the Virgin of Manawag, the lady who is calling. True to her name, Manawag, which is actually from the local word, Sakiya uh, Bi'i Mantatawag, a lady is calling. So I think uh, that will always be her, uh, her message and invitation. She's calling us every time, all the time, no, uh, to, to come back. That's why when you go to Manawag, you don't only see the lady. Actually, she is actually presenting us someone no, uh, that she's carrying along, no, uh, the sun her son, the son of God, and that's actually her, her mission, why she has to, to keep calling us, no? keep calling us, no? tinatawag tayo, no? No? Our Lady of Manawag, no? uh, to come back to his son, no? who keeps also uh, calling us, and uh, who remains, no? uh, open his arms no? to, uh, to welcome us uh, with love and mercy and forgiveness, no, no matter who we are, no matter uh, what our status in the society is, no matter how bad we feel about ourselves, no, uh, the lady is always calling us. No, there is always mercy and love greater no, than your biggest sin. But to her most devout children, she is simply Apo Baket, the honored lady.
meron akong mabigat na problema. Tapos pag siguro sa intercession ng Our Lady of Manawag, nagiging hindi masyadong mabigat yung problema ko na yon. So, nagiging mas closer ako sa Our Lady of Manawag para maging strong ako sa problema na yon. Ibinibigay sa akin ni Lord. So, parang ganun. Parang siya rin ang nagpalapit sa akin kay Jesus ang apo bakit. Talagang si Mama Mary ay tumatawag ng mga tao. Kaya nga siguro, yan ang dahilan dahil kaya nga maraming mga tao na pupunta dito. And then, of course, pa, pati ang kanilang wishes ay parang uh, nakakamtam nila po ang kanilang wishes. Yung kanilang mga petitions dito po kay Mama Mary. Her full title is almost intimidating. La Gran Señora de Filipinas, Nuestra Señora del Santísimo Rosario, La Naval de Manila. It is a title that clues us in to the particular nature of this image. La Gran Señora de Filipinas indicates her patronage over the entire archipelago. Nuestra Señora del Santísimo Rosario indicates her iconography as a lady of the most holy rosary who bears both the infant Jesus and the rosary. La Naval de Manila points to her history as a defender of naval fleets and protector of the galleons who sailed under her guidance. A lofty title which tells us how deeply this virgin is ingrained into our consciousness. Pagdating ng mga Kastilang Pare, noong 1587, uh, sinimula nila ang pagpalaganap ng Banal na Rosario sa Pilipinas. However, in 1649, nagkaroon ng Battles of Lanaval doon sa Manila Bay na kung saan may mga Dutch ships na gustong i-conquer ang Philippines at nangako ang mga Kastilang soldiers at mga pare na kapag manalo sila sa battle na ito, i-consecrate nila ang kanilang sarili sa debosyon sa Birhen ng Rosario La Naval de Manila. So doon nagsimula yun. Napakahalaga sa akin yung ma mapalapit ka sa simbahan, magdasal ng, ng rosaryo. Napakahalaga doon para sa akin, kahit wala yung material ng mga bagay. So yung mga pamangkin ko, in a way, napapasa ko sa kanila. Tatay ko, nagdarasal din ng Santo Rosario. Kapatid ko, nagsisimba sila. Kaya para sa akin, isang napakahalagang okay na yun sa akin. Kahit hindi yung material na bagay, walang, hindi, hindi ka ano sa material na bagay. Basta yun, para sa akin, napakayaman na namin na makilala nila ang Panginoon, same time si Mama Mary, mahalaga na yun sa akin. Likas sa kultura nating mga Pinoy ang makaina. Kaya't madaling makarelate ang ating mga kapatid na Katoliko sa ating mahal na Birhen. Kahit siguro sa ang simbahan, basta may mahal na birhen, madali makarelate ang mga Pilipino dahil likas na makaina ang Pilipino. At dahil dito, madali silang makapagdasal na naniniwala sila na ang ating mahal na ina sa kal kalangitan ay patuloy na gumagabay sa kanilang paglalakbay dito sa buhay na ito. And because of that, our devotion to the Blessed Mother is truly that comes from within the person. There is really an innate love of the Filipino people to our mothers. Kaya dahil doon, mas madali tayong nakarelate sa debosyon natin sa ating mahal na ina.
Pasco. Is there a more anticipated season in the Philippines? We end the survey of the great Marian images with the fullest expression of the Virgin's purpose, the celebration of Christ's birth. In the Maitinis of Kawit, Cavite, a whole community enacts the Panunuluyan, Mary and Joseph's search for shelter in which to deliver their child. <laughs> Mga nagnalakihang bahay Anot dito ka Nasumpungan Sa akin ay Mambagapag Yung may tinis kasi uh, itself, yung December 24, yun ay parada siya in a form of parang possession. Maraming mga karosa na ginagamit, siguro around mga more than 10. Uh, ito ay tungkol sa salvation history natin. Nagsis nagsimula ito sa mga kagaya ni na Ebat Adan hanggang sa dumating sa point na hanggang kina Jesus, uh, Mama Mary at saka kay St. Joseph. Ang pinaka-center nito, ay yung panunuluyan. Yun yung naghahanap si Virgin Mary and St. Joseph ng matutuluyan nila na pwedeng panganakan ng uh, ating mahal na si Jesus. At ito ay magtatapos sa papuntang simbahan. At ako ay nagalip Mga aso kong mababagsik Ang sa inyo'y In the Pastores de Talisay, here enacted by the Ramon Obusan Folkloric Group, the influence of Mexican folk tradition is clearly seen. What better way to end the season of Dayao? This exuberant and colorful dance shows how we Filipinos transform every influence into an expression of our own authentic selves. Filipinos are said to have the longest Christmas celebration in the whole world because it's about the Virgin Mary and the Christ child. This relationship the Virgin Mary and the Christ child is very symbolic of the most important relationship in Filipino culture, mother and child relationship. Why is this relationship important? Because the Filipinos give so much value to human connectivity. And the strongest human connection is of course between mother and child. We love the devotion of the mother to the child. And we also appreciate how much the child adores the mother. And this goes a long way towards shaping the Filipino character because the emotional bonding, the very, very close emotional bonding that happens between mother and child is very important in giving the Filipinos what we call capacity for pakikiramdam or empathy or the ability to feel one another. This is a very, very important Filipino quality and that many other people may not have developed this capacity for empathy as much as we we have.
If there's one thing that I hope you take away from season five of Dayao, it is this. The Filipino has always been a thankful race. Gratitude always informs our rituals and our traditions. Constantly, we thank God, Allah, Virgin, Nino, Nazareno, the spirits of forest and fields, whether animist, Islamic, or Catholic. We have that gratitude in our hearts. It makes us aware of our place in the world, of our need to live with and for others, of our openness to guidance and intercession. Pagdiwang at pasasalamat. For many modern Filipinos, are these concepts now outmoded, archaic, meaningless? What have we lost when, in our sense of self-entitlement, we choose to see ourselves as the centers of our own small and limited worlds? In the succeeding seasons of Dayao, we will continue to show you the worlds beyond your own. That is our continuing mission, to give you inspiring glimpses of Dayao, our knowledge, our pride. One, two,